and welcome to a silver flint video. In this video, we're going to be exploring sand casting. Delft clay casting is what it's generally referred to, sand casting. So we'll come to that in a bit. Um, so this is uh, a system that you'll have seen on a couple of my videos and uh, we'll see on more future videos. Um, let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's whack some of this in here so we can play with it. Right, so this is uh, Delft Clay, um, as it were, the, the brand name Delft Clay. Uh, but let's let's go back to basics. So sand casting. Sand casting is the process by which we use a sand that can hold a material, a sand that can hold a pattern, uh, by which we can then use the pattern, make the the mould, two part mould, that then holds the shape of that object in fine detail. So that when we remove the pattern, remove the, the master object, we are left with a void that fairly closely resembles the original piece. Uh, it's a system that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. So this is as a Delft clay, and it's basically um, sand with then oils and other materials uh, in it that will then allow that sand to hold together. So bringing it together, we can then compact that and it will then take that shape. And what we want in a clay, um, in, a, in a casting sand, is it will hold its shape um, and then um, will maintain that shape, but also will take the fine detail of whatever it is that we're casting. Now, there are plenty of other sand casting um, material out there. Um, Delft is one that's got um, a fairly good name and this kind of casting process, at least for silver work, is generally referred to as the Delft system, the Delft clay system um, or Delft system. Um, the problem with it, or rather, you know, this kind of thing, so you can buy this kit, you get your two kilograms of, of Delft clay um, and then you get this uh, casting flask. Um, and this is this is like almost 50 quid's worth of stuff. Um, and if and yeah, there's plenty in here to fill this flask. Um, but if you want to do anything bigger, then you need a bigger flask and you obviously need more material. Um, and so uh, I found that um, the project that I've I've got coming up soon. This. That's Delft. So a project I've got coming up soon requires that I fill a much bigger flask and in fact requires that I fill this flask um, which is uh, about 20 centimeters by about 10 centimeters by uh, seven and a half centimeters deep um, and uh, just like with this one which is a two-part this is a two-part as well get that one out so we have a, a cope and a drag so there's the bottom part just like with this one um, so uh, we turn this upside down, we turn that down, we place our object in there um, and we or we, we fill it up etc. We turn it over, we press the object in, we then put the other half on top and we fill that and relevant holes in it for, for casting. Now going back to something I, I said earlier on which is expense, which is there isn't enough um, Delft clay in my, my setup here um, to satisfactorily fill this. And so to get more of this, um, it turns out to be really expensive. So Delft clay, brand name Delft clay, is um, about £20 per kilogram. But as I said, there are, are alternatives out there. And I think a crucial part when we're looking at alternatives is not to think about getting alternative that is a, a knockoff, a cheap version of Delft, because I'm sure there are those out there. What I was interested in um, were the properties of the Delft clay. 
and I've been working with um, another supplier that provide uh, supplies Delft like clay for doing sand casting but theirs is a finer grain of sand and generally holds up to be very comparable to Delft clay you work it in exactly the same way it really looks almost the same to be honest um, but because it has a finer degree of sand the sand is, is smaller particles it actually retains finer detail in the in the item so um, you can get this uh, from ebay that's where i got mine from and um, that's was it 1.25 yeah to got two and a half kilograms of the stuff there we are two and a half kilograms of it that cost me 13 quid so it works out at five pounds 20 per kilogram vastly cheaper um, and i'm hoping that that will be enough to fill uh, this flask for the future project but let's have a look at this stuff and and see how it compares now i think the crucial thing to really stress um, is that this is by no means is this a a knockoff a cheap version of delf it is not it is just an alternative sand medium for doing sand casting or delf casting as it's generally called yeah, within the silver trade as it were so let's open this up and have a look now i have been playing around with um, um how how i could you know how i could show <clears throat> the difference between these two and so i thought the really the only way one i, I could do it is obviously is to cast something which I might try and do in this video. So if, sorry, if we don't get to casting something in this video, apologies, um, we'll be in the next one. Um, but we definitely can look at taking some impressions of material uh, using the two different versions and just seeing the, the resolution of that uh, mold that we create. So um, let's just get a little bit of this stuff out. So here we are. So just feeling it in between the fingers and without having some highly detailed means of comparing this uh, fineness to that fineness is I can already feel that this is a, a finer grain material in my fingers. The particles are smaller than they are in the Delft. Um, I also say that it also feels a bit drier, less oily. Um, and that's not implying that any of these are oily, but less, less, um, yeah, less oily. And so it does crumble a little bit um, easier than the Delft clay. Um, and in fact, the notes on the supplier's um, eBay listing does indicate that um, you do need to pack it down very well um, because it does how it can um, to, to maintain its, its form and its shape um when you're when you're working it if you don't then there is a, a risk that the you know the, the mold could fail um but just uh, just feeling it um it does feel a lot finer and working with this stuff it does it is it is finer and it does retain fineness in the in the actual item that you're taking a mold from so i thought i would quickly get set up and we'd uh, m take a mold of an item using the delft clay and we'd take a mold of the item using um, the um, delft like clay um, i wish you could come up with a like a brand name for it delft like clay um, and just compare um, but again just reiterate this is not a sort of a knockoff of delft clay it's just another one of the De delft clay of the delft the oiled clays that are out there and there are others um but i just i you know i can't afford to go buying lots of these just to stress I've, i have bought this this isn't a sponsored review or comparison in any shape manner or form i have bought this for like i said a project that um, i've got coming up that um i hope i'll uh, uh video or i will video and i hope it works because i'm really excited about it so i'll quickly just clear the bench work things out etc get set up and we'll do a, a molding in the delft clay and we'll do a molding in the delft like clay so this is we'll start off with the uh, delft clay so what i'm going to do i'm going to use the the flask that comes with the delft clay kit and i'm going to simply just make a mold of a two pence coin um so uh, this is nowhere near as is this a sort of a tutorial so I shall literally uh, fast 
forward through this and then we'll look at it at the end. The, the mold made so what I'm just going to do is just tap this and hope is it should then just fall out and in there is the casting which I doubt at this resolution you'll be able to make out but I will try and take a couple of photographs of it um, but looking at it as best I can um, I've got so that's the original so we've got uh, the detail from the the two pence and the lettering in two pence we've got the, the feathers coming up etc we've got the two in there a little scrolly bit but um, yeah, we've even got the little dimples going on the outside etc but what I'll do is I'll stop filming I'll take some photographs of this and I'll see if I can work out a way of keeping this because I need the mold to do the other one and so we can then do a side-by-side -side comparison um, on the other side uh, the Queen's head again I can see that the Queen's head I can see the lettering in there um, and so on. So yeah, so I'll, I'll stop filming. I'll try and get some photographs um, and so we've got some nice high-res photographs um, and then we'll crack on and try and use the other stuff and see what we get from that. <music> We'll fast forward because you don't need to see this bit. Okay, again, I don't know what I doubt you'll be able to pick any of this up on there. So I will stop the filming and take some snaps just so that we can compare the two together. Back in a moment. So here we are. So this is the Delft clay and this is the Delft like clay. And I think comparing the two visually just here, I would say that the Delft like clay has, as expected with its finer particles, picked up more details. Um, in this one, I can actually make out the, the details of the ridge going up inside the feather um, 
just up here on the right hand side feather I can see the actual central vein going up whereas in this one I can't really see it um, and I've had a good look also looking at um, the actual detail in the feather I think I can just about make out the veins of the actual feather uh, in this one um, but less so uh, in, in the Delft clay also the, the number two is a bit more crisp and refined in this one than it is in the Delft clay. So that's just having a look at how the materials come, uh, you know, take the detail and you know, definitely this, this um, uh, Delft like clay uh, does capture more refined detail in the object. Working it, it does say uh, in the in the eBay page um, that you need to compact it a bit more because it's a bit more finer and less um, holdy togetherness. I'm sure there's a technical word for that. Um, and so you do need to compact it. And I don't think that extra bit of compaction that one might do on this um, reflects badly or, or well on the Delphin that you know the same amount of compaction was used on, on both of this maybe just a little bit more on this, but I think it's a case of that uh, this is a, a finer grain material, so you're gonna get finer detail. It's not a cheap Delft clay, it's an alternative to it. Um, it just is a lot cheaper. I'm interested to see how this will take a casting. Unfortunately, I haven't got time to do that today, um, but uh, I think it's, you know, it's got great potential. I'm interested to see how it will hold up in um, this large flask that I've made. Um, and so we'll be interested to see. So um, I hope that's been interesting for you. Um, I hope that's giving you some ideas and some thoughts on alternatives to the Delft brand product. And like I said, it's not a cheap version, it's just an alternative one. So um, if you've enjoyed this video, do hit the, the thumbs up um, and do sort of think about subscribing. And uh, hopefully I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.